Meet Serena, your virtual companion for emotional support. The ultimate safe space to discuss your thoughts, your fears, and the ups and downs of daily life. Start your free trial today at serena.chat. Am I the asshole for leaving my sister's child and moving to America? My sister and I have always been close. We did everything together. She was literally my best friend. I'm married and have three kids. Whilst my sister is married and has just one child, around 2020 my sister got an opportunity to go work in Canada. I was so happy for her but she had a son, who was one year old at the time, and he did not have a passport nor visa so she asked if he could live with me. I said okay because I assumed it wouldn't be for that long, a year or less I could deal with but he's my nephew so I didn't really mind. About 2-3 years go by he's still living with us. My sister never made effort to come see him or any plans to come take her child with her. When my children go on school break, my kids travel to their dad. He travels a lot cause of his job. So I would leave my sister's son with my mother, because yet again he doesn't have a passport. My sister never made effort to do one for him. Early this year around April we unfortunately lost my mother. My sister called to check up on us and all. I and my children were set to move to America right after my second oldest finishes his IGCSEs and when the last born goes on school break. So during the summer around August, my sister was aware of this from the start of January last month July my kids went for a short summer break to the Philippines where their dad is and I stayed home with my sister child because there was no one to look after him. During those weeks I told my sister in a few weeks we would be moving. She said okay. Then somewhere last week, she was supposed to come pick up her child. I called and texted a bunch of times but it seemed she had blocked me everywhere. I was fed up so I contacted her husband. He's not really in the picture and explained everything to him and he decided to take his child and I was so thankful. The day I was meant to leave, my sister called and started shouting her lungs off about how selfish, wicked and ungrateful I am, and insulting me about how I could do this to her, and how rude it was for me to give her son to her husband given the situation they are in. I just turned off my phone, took my kids and went to the airport but I've been feeling so guilty maybe I shouldn't have done what I did. Clarification and edited post. About the dad, my sister and her husband always had a difficult marriage. My sister was more of a controlling person and all she was basically the red flag in the relationship. Whenever they got into fights she would throw stuff at her partner, say a lot of cuss words and all but he never did such. She always threatened for a divorce, then one day she did. But after she found out the divorce process was hella expensive she just decided she'd take it slow however she did not want her child anywhere near the dad. She did everything in her power for him not to get full custody of him, because he had sort of a criminal record so the judge didn't think he was a good fit. But he did permit him to see his child anytime. For those saying I should have just made a passport for him or something, don't you think I already tried? But they needed his real parents or at least a legal guardian to do it for him and I am just an aunt I couldn't do anything. My nephew is 4 years old this year, he knows his dad cause he visits him on any special occasion such as his birthday, Christmas, Thanksgiving, what not, so he does know his father exists, his father has tried multiple times to get full custody but to no avail though saying I do not love my nephew, I do, I love him very much with my whole heart but it was very difficult to raise 4 children, I've always thought of him as my own. I was not so much well off back in my country I and my family lived of my husband's job paying for their school's fees and the money I make goes for food. It was very difficult that's why I took up a job in America and I got it. I tried so hard to get him a passport but I couldn't and I could not also adopt because his father is obviously in the picture-ish. It was either between calling child services, giving him to his father or just cancelling this whole moving idea but moving would have been great for my children's education especially my second oldest going into a level 1 hope that answers and clears all confusion and questions so reddit Ieda? Not the asshole at all. You were wonderfully patient and generous to keep your nephew for years while your sister has shown no responsibility for him at all. It's good his father wanted to assume his care. That is where it seems he belongs and I hope he is well treated and happy there. You have nothing to feel guilty about. Instead, your sister should be forever grateful for what you have done for her son. Not the asshole. Wow. What a horrible situation to be in. I'm so sorry your sister spent years ignoring her kid and then ghosted you and then got angry when you knew you were backed into a corner. You didn't do anything other than be the mother needed to her child. Clearly, you couldn't make her get her own child and you were kind to no bring in the authorities since she abandoned him for years. Honestly I can't render a verdict but how my heart hurts for that kid. First his mum abandons him and now the only family her really knew has left, along with his grand dying. I get he is with his dad now but the consistent adult in his life has now disappeared, 
I'm not judging you for moving. You obviously had to do what was best and you said you would have took him. Will you stay in touch with him and will you actually miss the we might? Please don't fully abandon him. Your sister abandoned her child and somehow you're the bad person? Please. So your sister essentially abandons her child, expects you to raise her child for her, then blames you for what exactly? Tell your sister I say she needs to do better. Not the asshole. Am I the asshole for telling my boyfriend I don't want to sleep with his dog in the room? B, M29, and I, F33, have been dating for two months and things are going well except we only spent the night at each other's flats twice because I am not comfortable sleeping at his with his dog in the bedroom, and he also can't leave the dog at his to sleep at mine. The dog is a mix of a Labrador and Mastiff, he's only two so basically still a puppy and very energetic, but he weighs already 50 kilograms and is very large. B has been raising him alone for two years and was not dating seriously before me, so he's been used to sleep with his dog in his bed except in summer because it is too warm so the dogs sleep on the floor but in the bedroom. I have never had dogs in my life and was even paralyzed with fear when dogs were walking near me growing up. I've worked a lot on this and am more comfortable around them but I am still not comfortable sleeping next to a dog I don't know who is so massive. On top of this, the dog is very jealous of our intimacy and starts barking when we so much as hug each other, which immediately puts me on edge that he's gonna jump on me. I tried once to go sleep at his with the dog but the dog was so nervous that he started peeing on the balcony which he never does to get attention back on him, so I decided to go back home to not stress the dog more. Edit. People seem to think this is my interpretation, but this is what B told me happened. I want to get more comfortable being around the dog because I really like B and we're becoming more serious but I also feel like I don't want to get comfortable enough that I accept sleeping with the dog. I want us to have intimacy and I don't feel like we will be able to if there is a dog guarding our interactions 24-7. I want us to have space to develop our relationship without having to think that we have to put the dog in the kitchen to be together and then he gets right back out when we're done. I understand the dog is more important to him than I am. But I feel like it's fair of me to ask him to meet me halfway on this and start changing the sleeping habits of the dog in order to hold space for me. I'm already compromising and going out of my comfort zone to learn to know the dog and be more comfortable around him. It also means that I'm gonna have this dog in my life for years if we keep dating. I expressed to him my discomfort but didn't demand anything about where the dog sleeps so far. Because it's still early and I understand he can't change his dog's habits for me after two months but he seems to think I will accept and learn to sleep with the dog and I will not, I want us to have our space. Parents don't sleep with their kids, they have their privacy, a dog this big doesn't let us have any privacy, especially because of his jealous behavior. I will eventually be comfortable around the dog and will occasionally, for example during a camping trip be fine with having the dog sleeping next to us, but I don't want this to be the daily sleeping arrangements. So, am I the asshole for considering telling B that I will never be okay with sleeping with the dog in the bedroom? No assholes here unless there's something you left out about his reaction to the discomfort you expressed. That said, understand that this may be something he won't bend on. I'm not saying that's right or wrong, it just is reality. My dogs have always slept in my room, and this would be a non-starter for me. Also, it's not actually true that parents don't sleep with their kids that's true in a lot of families. But co-sleeping is a real thing for some families too. I didn't do it, but I know many who did. You're certainly not an asshole for expressing your preference here, just so long as you understand that he might not be okay with that. It does sound like the dog needs more training and has some separation anxiety, but that doesn't make your boyfriend an asshole, hence the NAH as opposed to NTA. Dog people are not compatible with non-dog people. My dogs sleep in my bedroom. It would be a deal breaker for me if someone said my dogs needed to sleep in another room. I am not saying that it makes you an asshole but it does make you not compatible with this person. Info. Do you want the dog to sleep outside the room only when you're not there or all the time? And ta but if boyfriend chooses the dog it's life. I'm just saying if you have issues with dogs that's not fully resolved why did you date someone with a dog? Not the asshole. It doesn't sound like your boyfriend is ready for a relationship. Am I the asshole for telling my half-brother and sister-in-law to be quieter? So I, 25M, have been out of a job for a while and I haven't been living in the city I'm in long, so for the past two months I've been living with my half-brother, 37M, Sid, and his wife, 37F, Alice. They don't exactly have a spare room set up for guests so I sleep in their living room, technically they do have a second bedroom, 
but they've made it into like a home library thing. There isn't really much room for me to sleep now that a bunch of my stuff is in there too. Obviously I appreciate that they're letting me live with them, but honestly they're kind of getting on my nerves. They've got a lot of home rules that are honestly kind of a pain in the ass to keep up with, and they expect me to do more housework type shit because I don't have a job right now, even though it's not like I have a real bed or anything. Anyway, I haven't said anything to them about that because they're obviously letting me stay with them for a while for free, but one thing that really has been grating to me is that I can always hear them. I guess because they like having their space as a couple. Nowadays when they get home and hang out with each other they mostly just stay in their bedroom or in their home library thing. They close the door and all, but I can always hear everything they're saying, and it's especially annoying when they talk about me, and does Sid ever love griping about me. I have to turn the TV on really loud to not hear them, or just wear headphones all the time. They also talk all the time, the only time they aren't having like a constant conversation going is when they read, and even then they take breaks and talk for fucking ages, or when they watch a movie they've never seen before, and that's always followed up by ages of talking about it. The most annoying thing though, is that they are so loud when they fuck, and they fuck all the fucking time, which I wouldn't be guessed, Sid said he was, mostly asexual, once, but I guess he must have meant Alice was the exception or sth. I didn't know anyone liked constant talking while fucking too, and they don't really take a short time either. They go to bed later than I do and wake up earlier too, and the number of times I've been kept awake or woken up early because I can hear them is enough to drive me crazy. Earlier today, I told Sid and Alice they should be quieter because I can hear them all the time. I guess that pissed Sid off, because he told me to find my own place if it bothered me. Alice gave Sid a look and asked me if I wanted to sleep in their library instead. I said no, because it's tiny and I didn't mind sleeping on the couch, I just minded hearing everything they say and hearing them fuck all the time. That really pissed Sid off, and he called me an asshole for trying to tell him and Alice what to do in their place and told me to find some place else to stay if he had a problem with him and Alice, living their lives as they liked. I think he was being way too extreme. Am I the asshole? First of all, if they've been good enough to make space for you when you'd otherwise be homeless, you should be doing most of the chores without even being asked. This is basic decency. Secondly, it's their home, they can do what they want and be as loud as they want. Put your noise-canceling headphones on and mind your own business. Finally, if you don't like it, move out and get your own place or get a job so that you're not around so much. I'm sure they'd appreciate a bit of break from you. You are the asshole. You are the asshole. Not your place. Not your rules. Show a little gratitude. You are the asshole. Get earplugs. Info. Why can't you take your laptop and head to your local library and do your job search there? Treat it like a 9-5. Even on weekends coffee shops on Sundays. That way you are only at the house to sleep, evenings and you will find a job a lot quicker, therefore move out a lot quicker. But you are the asshole. Am I the asshole for flipping out at my boyfriend for making serious decisions behind my back? I 33 female moved in with my boyfriend 33 male and his brother 30 male into an apartment that I found for us last September. I was in an abusive situation with a family member, in poor health and needed to get out of my living situation, boyfriend told me he wanted to help support me. The original agreement was that I wouldn't pay anything until I got back on my feet. I didn't want to freeload, and still contributed what I could and rent was split three ways. All three of us are on the lease. We all were supposed to live here and pay rent. I paid for all the furniture, food, household items, internet and gave my share in rent. His brother suddenly up and left within three months, barely giving us more than a week's notice. Then boyfriend started expecting more money from me, which I didn't think was fair because of what his brother did to us. I told him his brother should still pay rent because he was still on the lease, and that never happened, brother was let off the hook. BF and I continued to struggle financially but stayed because our one-year lease and enjoyment of the location. BF constantly complains about being broke and acts like it's my fault. Now our lease ends in September. I mentioned to him three months ago that we need to figure out what to do since our lease ends soon, and he should talk to our landlord and see if we can go month to month while we look at houses. I sent him several houses and was an active participant in finding us another place to live. Sunday I'm cleaning the house and I get a text from my landlord saying, I have a showing at 6 p.m. I call boyfriend for clarification, and find out he was texting my landlord behind my back, telling him that we are leaving in September. He had been texting him for a month. 
My landlord had been advertising our place and has many offers. My landlord gave boyfriend the option to do month to month before he got any serious offers, but my boyfriend never responded to the text so that offer is off the table. BF said he was trying to get us an apartment with his friend but it fell through. I knew nothing about this. Now our landlord wants either a six-month lease or nothing. I'm furious he did this behind my back and lied to me. I start yelling out of frustration, panic. My boyfriend gets mad at me for yelling at him. He turns cold over this and only focuses on the fact that I'm yelling and not the hole he dug us into. I told him I don't have enough time to leave in one malleant. I am having surgery in days, which needs two procedures in the next three months, and also have exotic pets that are difficult to find pet-friendly housing for. We have nowhere to go. He insists I am forcing him to do another six-month lease and says I am bankrupting him and making this my fault. When I tried to talk to him about it again this morning he said he's having a bad day and to leave him alone. So I have to put up with six months of him hanging this over my head like a noose, thinking I'm the devil for extending our lease so we can find another place with a proper time frame. So am I the asshole? Info. I sent him several houses and was an active participant in finding us another place to live. But why didn't you just choose one? Esh. You could have spoken to the landlord. You already know your boyfriend can't be relied on as he let his brother off paying the rent. Esh. Just go your separate ways. Esh. If you were on the lease, you should have spoken to the landlord. Your boyfriend behaved irresponsibly. You both need to work on communication. Find a place on your own. A studio or roommate situation shouldn't cost you as much as a place that accommodates three.